Hi, my name is Jonathan Rotz, field agronomist for Pioneer. I just want to talk with you today a little bit about some tips for setting up for a successful new year. As we get to this time of year, a lot of times we, we change from looking the year past to the year ahead and thinking about what all we can do to, to set up for the maximum success. One of the biggest things to think about is soil sampling. And I want to just take a moment today to talk with you about this. Sometimes it seems very basic, but there are some things that we, we want to really think about in, in terms of getting a really good soil sample for the next coming year. So the first off is why do we even soil sample? And the way that I look at it, there's three main things that we do for soil sampling. The first and foremost that I think about is the economics. We want to understand what nutrition for our plants is actually in that soil. Therefore, we don't have to buy that nutrition and place it on. So, so we can grow that crop at a more economical level. The second that goes right along with that is environmental. So not only do we want to know what's there so that we don't have to pay for excess, but we also want to know what's there so that we don't overapply nutrients that may then be lost to the environment and have environmental impact. The other part of soil sampling that probably used to not be thought about a lot but is huge this day is the distribution of that fertility. And we'll talk a little bit about this later. What I'll really go into is some different types of soil sampling and how that tells us where those uh, nutrients are in the field. So the, the first thing to think about is soil fertility is really the backbone of any cropping system. We need to know uh, what's out there for that plant. Our nutrients are normally broken down into major classes, macro and micronutrients. Our macronutrients are just those nutrients that are needed in larger portions. So we think a lot about nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium as being a macronutrient. We also have secondary macronutrients like calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. We're getting more attention to those, especially sulfur with uh, the less deposition, at least here in the east, that we get. And then micronutrients are just needed in smaller amounts, such as iron, mang uh, manganese, zinc, things like that. But they're still extremely crucial. For instance, molybdenum. We need 0 0.01 pounds per acre of molybdenum for a 200 bushel corn crop. Now, that seems like a very small amount, which it is. But if we don't have that 0 0.1 pounds per acre, we're going to limit yield just as we would if we don't put on enough nitrogen. So they're all still very important. The other thing to really keep in mind with a soil sample is it's not only that you're sampling the soil, but how well are you doing that and, and accounting for the distribution. When you send that soil sample away, you have less than two pounds of soil in, in your sample. However, for every single acre furrow slice that we have, there's 2 million pounds of soil. So if you think about it, for every acre that you're sampling, there's 2 million pounds, and you're going to send away you know, 2 pounds or less, probably, of soil to represent that. So we have to think how well are we sampling and, and sample wisely. So there's three different ways that we can sample. A lot of times we think about a composite sample, and a composite sample is just one sample across the whole field trying to take into account variability and sample accordingly so we get a good blend. But again, that's only going to tell us for that whole field what we have. Zone sampling is becoming more and more common and popular because we can set up management zones within that field. And we can then take those management zones and sample within the management zone and figure out what we have as far as nutrients within that and be a little more precise about our application of nutrients to the yield environment within that specific management zone. The third type would be grid sampling. And grid sampling has been around for a long time. And there's folks that feel very passionately for or against it, but it is a very, uh, a very good type of sampling. Uh, a grid sampling is when we just snap a grid across that whole field. And then within those grids, we'll take an individual sample and for each grid, we'll send out a sample. Obviously more labor intensive, more costly with the sampling, but if we can have variable rate on top of that and we kind of set up our management zones based on those grids, we can not only increase our production within that whole field, but we can also very often decrease our fertility requirements um, across that entire, uh, that entire field as well. The last thing I'll say is once you get that soil test back, you know, once you've gone and you've, you've done all this work and you get this soil test back, now we have to decide what is the best thing we can possibly do. The first place to always start whenever you have a soil test is with pH. 
So if you have no nothing else to do, if your pH is out of whack, this is going to be the thing that we want to get back in line first because pH is actually the key to unlocking all the nutrients in our soil. So if our pH is off and we just dump more nutrients on, we may not have them plant available the way we would like them to. After we go with the pH, which is a great thing to adjust this time of year, we can then move into things like our macronutrients. You think about your macronutrients that are non, uh, you know, won't escape, like uh, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, things like that, that we can add ahead of planting. And then after that, if we have some lackings in our micronutrients and things like that, I always suggest that we wait until we are actually close to or in the season for micros. And again, with your nitrogen doing split apply and as close to planting as possible. I hope you found this uh, insightful and helpful for you. And hopefully we can all have a great new year as we get uh, set to have wonderful possibilities with all our Pioneer products out there. Again, this is Jonathan Rotz, agronomist with Pioneer. Have a great day. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.